This morning our message is the psalmist grand finale of praise. It's a beautiful psalm. Would you turn with me to Psalm 150 in your pew Bibles or else look up at the screen. It's a beautiful psalm. You know, when I meet with people who don't know Jesus and who don't know the Bible, I'll, they'll say, where do I begin? Well, you want them to be in one of the Gospels, maybe the Gospel of John, and they also have to know some of the Old Testament to understand what's in the Gospels. And so I recommend the book of Genesis, the big book of beginnings. You've got to understand that. And also the book of Psalms in the Old Testament. If you know those two books, it helps you to be able to understand uh, the New Testament and especially the Gospels. And uh, so this morning we'll go to Psalm 150. And the Psalms are the songbook of the Bible. So let's look at Psalm 150. Hear God's inspired word. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the strings and flute. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May God bless his holy word to us this morning. A few years ago, when I was in ministering in Flint, Michigan, uh, I attended Mott Community College. It was after 20, I think it was about 24 years of being out of college. And I attended college there uh, for three courses. One of the courses that I took was Introduction to Journalism. And uh, in that class, I remember learning that there were questions that a good journalist needs to ask. They are these questions. Some of you remember them. Who, what, where, why, and when. When people read a newspaper or magazine article, their inquiring minds want to know the answers to those basic questions about what happened in the community or else in the world. If you read or sing Psalm 150, you would see that the, the psalm writer used good journalism principles. He answers our questions about his, his opening declaration where he says, praise the Lord. Thirteen times in this small psalm, the psalmist proclaims praise the Lord. Thirteen times he is saying in the Jewish language, in the Hebrew language, hallelujah. That means praise the Lord. The Old Testament worship leader says, praise the Lord. And then he follows in his opening statement with five answers to our questions. And the first question he answers is, where is God to be praised? It's in verse 1. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Well, he, where should he be praised? Well, in his sanctuary. That's the first thing. You know, when the Israelites were wandering in the wilderness, they were instructed to build a, a tabernacle, a tent. In the middle of that camp, there was that tent where God was to be worshipped. Later, David's son Solomon built a gorgeous temple where the Levites and the nation would worship the Lord with sacrifices that were given. And the smoke would rise from that altar day and night. You could see it from all around Jerusalem. And that's where they worshipped the Lord, their God. God is also to be praised in the sanctuary of his heavens, where the control room, the throne room of the universe is located. The book of Revelation gives us some, a taste of some of that praise that's going on, even right now. Uh, on this Sunday morning in heaven. 
He is to be praised in the sanctuary of his creation. And he is to be praised in his sanctuary within the heart of each believer. You know, the Lord is present. The Lord has promised that he would send his Holy Spirit to live in the heart of everyone who believes in Jesus. Our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit where the third person of the Trinity dwells. The answer to where this where question is, is this. God is to be praised everywhere. Everywhere. Why should God be praised? Verse 2. Praise him for his acts of power. Why should we praise him? Because of his acts of power. Because of what he does and who he is. First of all, we'll look at what he does, such as the creation. In Psalm 9, verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God, what God did for Israel and, and what he does for us, for providing for us with our daily bread. We should praise him for that. We should also praise him for redemption. We can't forget that. He saved Israel from the hand of Pharaoh and he forgave their sins. We too must praise God for his redemption for us through Jesus Christ. We must praise him for what he does. We must also praise him for his surpassing greatness, for who he is. We think about his, his attributes, his characteristics that include his holiness, his love, his mercy, and his goodness. Sometimes our praise and our prayers say a lot about what God has done for us. But our God is much more. We must marvel at his perfection, his love, his grace, his mercy, and yes, even his, his justice. We must glorify his holy name. I would like to make a suggestion to you this morning, and, and that is uh, try praying, try singing the names of of God. Uh, we did this in church one time, not here, but we use the names of God to in, in prayer to him. And, and it's a beautiful exercise for us to do. We must praise God for what he does and for who he is. And the next question is this, how, how should God be praised? And we see the answer to that in verses 3 through 5. The psalmist lists a whole orchestra of instruments. You know, early in the book of Genesis, the first book, uh, in chapter 4, verse 21, we read about Jubal, who was the father of all who play the horn and the flute. Instruments should play an important part in worship. And I'm glad we had Alan and Mary with us this morning and Dan and, and to join in praise. And maybe someday we'll have some others too that might join them as we praise God here at, at Hammond. We are to praise him with the sound of the trumpet. You know, the trumpet in the Old Testament was a, a ram's horn. And it was called the, the shofar. Uh, that was used. The trumpet was used to call God's people together to worship and, and to announce special holy days of, of Israel. We are to praise him with the harp and the lyre, uh, which are the stringed instrument, instruments. You know, the, the piano is a stringed instrument. If we had a string guitar here this morning, or even electric guitar, uh, they are stringed instruments, and we are used to use them in praise to the glory of God. We can praise God with the percussion instruments, the, the tambourines, the cymbals, both great and small. In, in Jewish worship, uh, they had small, tiny little uh, cymbals, and they were called castanets, and they had them in their fingers, and, and then there were the large resounding symbols that they used in praise. Praise him with dance, the psalmist says. You know, we Reformed people aren't accustomed to, to dancing in church. And I remember at the funeral for Al Heatbrink, he was one of our members uh, in, at the Bravo Church, and he was 80 years old, and he used, to, he used to begin the song service there 
in front of the church. And he was so happy as an 80-year-old, and he would go along, and, and when the songs were being sung, he would walk along like this. And I said, you know, Al had the closest thing, to, did the closest thing to a Christian Reformed dance uh, on, on Sunday mornings. And I hope, I, I just wish some of you could have met, or all of you could have met, Al Heatbrink. He was just full of the joy of the Lord. Verse 4, praise him with the strings and the flute. The flute would represent the, the wind and, and the reed instruments that make their music from the breath that comes from our, lo our lungs that are deep inside us. You know, God gives us our breath. I hope you thank God for the breath that you have each day. You know, it's, it's him. He gave us our life. And, and as Paul was meeting with the Greeks, uh, you know, he, he said, in him we live and move and have our, breen, breathe, our, our, our being. And yes, our, our breath, it comes from him. You know, over the years we've heard the harmonica, the accordion, the electric powered instruments, like the, like the keyboard or the electric piano, organs and, and guitars. I remember one time in uh, our church at, in uh, Cedar, Iowa, we were out in the country, it was a country church. And one of our former members, uh, he worked with InterVarsity on the campus in Iowa City. He worked with the foreign students. And one time he called me and he said, you know, there's a group of students and they play the drums and they like to sing. They're from Africa. Could we come to, to the church sometime? And I said, well, I'll talk to the council. So we did. We said, you know, yeah, we arranged on a, on a date. And they came with their drums. Some were pretty good sized. And uh, they were from different countries in Africa. And then I invited an African student who was going to Pella Christian High. And I said, you know, you need to come to that Sunday too. And so uh, her sponsors came with her that morning. And when she, when she saw them practicing in the front of the church before the service, she says, can I join them and sing too? And I said, I think, I think that's okay. You can do that. And so she had a big smile on her face. And, and our church was vibrating it, it just with the sound of those drums. And that was different for, for our people. And yet they enjoyed it. And we sang and we praised God together. We are to use the whole orchestra, the whole band of instruments to praise the Lord. Well, fourthly, who should praise the Lord? Who? In verse 6, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. You know, the whole choir, along with those who make a joyful noise or those who even hum, you know, you know that at bees, uh, they hum. Uh, my dad had bees when I was growing up. I think he had uh, probably the most. He had about four hives. Uh, and uh, because, uh, you, know, you know why bees hum? Because they don't know the words. And, and, uh, and do you also think that, that this praise even goes beyond us humans? You know, there, there's the, the birds that sing their praise to God and, and the frogs and that croak and the crickets who rub their legs together. They praise God. I remember in Iowa, I had never heard in this song except for vacation Bible school there. And then later on a trip, we were riding through Wyoming. And uh, it was on a Saturday afternoon and we had the radio on. And we heard the, the, that same song that the kids sang in vacation Bible school. All God's critters got a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, singing out loud on the telephone wire, and some just clap their hands or paws or anything they got now. So if you go on the computer and go to YouTube and p punch in all God's critters, there's, there's several versions, and uh, we played that on the computer when my grandkids were out, and they just enjoyed it thoroughly. But anyway, all the creatures, they join us in praise because they too were created by God. And we are created in God's image, unlike any animal. So we need to praise him twice as hard as those animals do. Five, when. 
is the Lord to be praised. The Apostle Paul, he instructed us not to forsake the assembly of the elect. You know, we need to be faithful in joining with God's people in, in praising him and singing. We are called to worship the Lord on his day. Paul also told the Philippians, he said, rejoice in the Lord sometimes. When you're happy, rejoice in the Lord always. That's not always so easy to do, is it? But we need to rejoice in the Lord always. Even when you sing by yourself in the car or in the shower or you sing in the truck or when you whistle while you're out taking a walk in the wild. The hymn, this hymn from Psalm 150 that we will, uh, we will sing says, Praise the Lord anytime and anywhere. What a choir. What a song. What a privilege that we can praise God and, and we can sing to him. You know, uh, it, it, it will be ours if we place our trust in Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. You know, if we, if we think about him and we meditate upon his word, you know, we can't help from just burst out with joy and, and praise to God uh, for all that he has done. You know, we need to know him more each day. And we need to believe in him. We need to trust in him. And then he puts a song in our heart. And that, and that joy that no one can take away. Notice Psalm 150 begins and it ends with a call to praise the Lord. Your life and mine should begin. And it should end by us exalting the name of the Lord. Don't you just love the final verse to this psalm and the finale uh, uh, to the entire book of Psalms when the psalmist says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And all God's people said, praise the Lord, amen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, who is robed in glory, you are the one who created everything that we see, and you are the one who made us, and your spirit breathed into us the breath of life, so that we might glorify you. We worship you by proclaiming your word, by thanking you in our prayers, and, and we worship you with our voices and the, the use of the instruments that are here today. Lord, we give you thanks for forgiving us of our sins and for the promise of glory, the glorious future in heaven. May the praise that we give today continue here on earth and on into eternity when we will sing a new song in heaven, a new song to the Lamb. This we pray in the name of Jesus, our Savior and our Lord. Amen.